Hey, this is Kyle, back with another video, and this will be a post-trip vlog of the 2021 Ram 1500 Laramie Night Edition 4x4 with the 6 foot 4 inch box. This has the Hemi E-Torque motor in it. And what the E-Torque does is it has a um, battery that is actually located um, behind these rear seats that allows for you to uh, put your foot on the brake it'll shut the motor off to save you fuel mileage at a stoplight and then as soon as you take your foot off the brake it starts that engine back up so I found that to be um, super smooth on our trip which was about a 4,000 mile road trip during the winter here in December of 2022. You can see we still have um, good tread left on these Goodyear Eagle Touring 285-45 R22 factory OEM style tires. And uh, these are a good tire for the freeway use and for down here in Arizona. But I would say if you're going to use this anywhere up north, that you're going to need some better tires. They performed pretty terribly in snow and ice. So they do have uh, lots of tread left. They are new tires, but they just performed absolutely horribly in the ice and snow. Luckily I had four wheel drive, but still I've had um, $150 tires perform better than those tires perform. Going at 75 miles an hour, it's so quiet and I had this thing completely loaded up. I had uh, stuff filling this entire bed. These uh, lights are nice and useful. I had stuff on the tie downs. See, I probably even scuffed it up a little bit with a couple of items. But that's why you have a bed liner to keep the metals nice. We also did try uh, camping in this. We'll do a vlog later on with the uh, tent in the bed of the truck, but it was a failure for this trip because we put it up uh, And we had all the stuff in the trunk, so we had to take it all out and then put the tent up and then the uh, Since we had the tent closed for air circulation because it was like 18 degrees outside It was choking out the heater and the heater wasn't allowing it to breathe so there was no oxygen in the air for the heater to keep producing heat for us to be able to survive the night. So we had to find a new strategy and get a hotel for the night. But here in Arizona we have plenty of uh, nice days that we'll be using this tent in the summer. So I'll go ahead and put a picture up right now of what the tent looks like. Back to the current video. As we walk up to the truck, you can see I have cleaned out all of the dog hair. We had the two huskies in here. We had these seats up and we had them on um, tethers. So they're latched in to the latches right there. And then we had it strapped to them so that they couldn't pull and damage any of the plastics any of the trim or the leather. And they were sitting on blankets that we had on top of the floor liners. We even used the Ram boxes. We put some items in there. You can see there's some water left in there that I forgot to clean out from all of the ice that we had surrounded the items with.
So yeah, you can see uh, it's nice and clean now. I'll put a clip up right here during the cleaning. We really used this truck to its uh, full capability, but the dogs had plenty of room back here. You can see it's a little bit dirty. I will be vacuuming it out right now. You can see uh, we also put a protector over the seats so that they didn't damage anything over the leather and we had blankets down so it was all lifted up a little bit so they didn't have this. These are going to be taken off right now and the back of the seat you can just see it's dirty. I'm going to vacuum it and we had them uh, tethered in so that when we opened the door they couldn't get out. This is as far as they could go and we had uh, harnesses on them and that held them in very nice and they had so much room back here uh, they were laying down and lounging the entire way now so let's go ahead and look at the odometer so you can see it's still dirty from all the salt that it endured up in minnesota and on the journey down yeah we're gonna take all the floor mats out and we're gonna power spray everything get it nice and clean again showing 29,665 miles. All right, well, let's give her a clean up and we'll come back to you later with some uh, more updates. So after just a simple vacuuming, you can see just how much better it looks. Take some pride in ownership, spend half an hour vacuuming like I just have. You can see just incredible difference. Uh, over there, it is completely unvacuumed. There's just hair everywhere. And then over here, it just looks so much better. So spend some time Show your truck you like it. Take care of your stuff. You can see, just a simple vacuum. Haven't uh, taken out any of my detail brushes to really get any of the embedded fibers. Or taken the, the floor mats out, which I will be taking out in power washing. Yeah, all the uh, suede held up very well. The dog here just comes right off of it. You just throw it on the ground or vacuum it up. Everything has been uh, clearing off. One little tip I have for you. If you have animals or um, pets, get a reusable lint roller. So you just uh, pull it out of this little container here. And you can see uh, there are some hair on it. And as long as you uh, push it on that right side. So there's one direction where it picks up the hair. It makes it a lot easier to uh, grab the hair fibers out of the carpet. So you can see one way it makes it, it grabs it and pulls the hairs out of the carpet and you can see them all right there so this was I believe uh, ten dollars at Walmart so there's a quick little tip to how I got the hairs out of the carpet quickly all right and we're back Let's go ahead and hop in the front seat and we'll go over a couple of items. All right, so when we sit in this truck, these seats are nice and comfy. Everything is uh, padded leather. So you can see 
I can push my finger down and it's a nice soft leather for you to rest your arm on while you're driving. You also have uh, padded over here and on here is also padded. So if you put your elbow up and hold the steering wheel, you put your elbow up here, it has um, areas to hold. I also really love the hand hole at the bottom of the steering wheel that you can utilize while you're driving. The visibility is great out of this truck. You have um, full mirrors and you even have the little mirror that helps you um, see if there's a vehicle closer to you, as well as the little triangle, which is the blind spot monitoring, which will also beep at you when you turn your turn signal on or if um, it's illuminated, mean, meaning that there's a vehicle next to you. As you can see, we had uh, we have USBs right here. You can use USB-C as well as uh, your normal USB to plug in your devices for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay for the screen here. So I'll go ahead and put up a video right here of how Android Auto and Apple CarPlay look on this display. All right, let's take a look at Android Auto. So we'll take our Android phone, which is the Samsung Galaxy S20. We'll take our USB-C cord, and we're just going to connect the USB-C into the phone. Android Auto connected. And you can see the Android Auto button is now on the bottom right. And you can zoom in and out of everything. You can see everything that you have on your maps. You can use um, Google Voice, so Google Search. You can say, hey, what's the weather here? Or look for a restaurant near me. Here's your notifications, uh, your music. And there's just the map. You can zoom in and out nice and easy. And you can click on some of those favorites, and they're right there. All right, and that is Android Auto. And then you can go back to your media if you want to have your music. And you can select that USB device, which is the phone that you have plugged in via USB-C and Android Auto. On the flip side, uh, let's go ahead and look at the... Apple CarPlay. So we have our iPhone 13. We have our USB. You can see we're connected to the Galaxy S20 FE via uh, Bluetooth. But let's just go ahead. We'll take the cord, plug it into the iPhone. And you can see how it brings up the Apple CarPlay. So you can use uh, voice for Siri. You can select go to open your Google Maps. Here's your music. Again, music, phone, and maps. And the same thing. You can do media. Select your source. You can either have your Bluetooth device or USB 1 would be the Apple CarPlay device. So you can select your music and click play. And one problem I did find with this um, display is that it is a fully wired CarPlay or Android Auto. So I'm going to be looking into uh, ways to make that wireless, so stay tuned. We may find a solution and get wireless CarPlay, which would be nice and handy. So you don't have to plug your phone in every time you get in the truck. So some other things. Uh, the seats are very comfortable while you're... Um, doing your 17 to 20 hour day drives. So, thousand miles a day. I was putting on these seats and it just rides great. They're, they're padded. They have um, your side support so you're not being thrown around. 
and they held up very well. Another thing that I really like is having these physical buttons. So when you get in your truck, if it's negative 26 degrees outside, negative 26 Fahrenheit, like it was when I was in Minnesota, you just get in, you press this heated steering wheel button, and while the car is idling it up, itself up to temperature, it's heating everything up for you. So you can even have it remember um, what you had on last time. So I had it, uh, when you turn on the truck, it would automatically turn on the heated seats and the heated steering wheel for the driver. You can get in and turn on the passenger seat if you'd like. Another thing uh, that I was doing while I was driving was I would put the screen off. So I would just go ahead and when I had the truck running, I would just go ahead and press the screen off. And then I didn't have to worry about that uh, display being on and uh, being too bright at night. You can also utilize this if you put an item in here um, that can hold your phone up. And you can see up here you have a cigarette lighter. So you have your power plug up here. You have all of these USBs that provide power. So you have two USB-Cs and two USBs, as well as your normal 12 volt. And you also have an additional 12 volt in the rear. I really appreciate having um, these physical controls so you don't have to fiddle with the screen and worrying about controls and turning everything on in there. Now when I was driving in the ice and the snow, obviously the uh, front and rear parking sensors got full of stuff, so when you turned it on, the truck would say that the uh, parking sensors are off and they need to be cleaned off before you can use, use them. So they were yellow until I got back down here to Arizona and could clean the truck. Then I was able to enable those again. This is the uh, screen that I had on the entire time. It was so that I could monitor my coolant temp, my trans temp, the oil temp and the oil pressure. And then I customized this display so that I have the clock, the compass, the temperature, the air temperature, and then the MPG in the bottom left. So talking about MPG, it is displaying 18.6, but that is over my ownership. So let's go ahead and I will put up what my average MPG was while uh, driving. With four wheel drive on, I assume we were getting about 14.5 MPG, and that was on the highway. And then while well, we were just in uh, two wheel drive on the highway going about 80 miles an hour with this 3.92 uh, rear end ratio, we were getting 17.5. Now the cruise control um, is easy to set, so you just enable it and you can set it up or down, you can resume. If you're uh, slowing down, you can cancel. You can also set a gear limit if you're going up and down a mountain. You can set a gear limit to hold, hold you uh, going your certain uh, speed so that you don't have to utilize your brakes and burn them out. And then anything in this white line right here is automatic. So it automatically senses uh, when you need to uh, run the wiper and it does it for the variable speed up to that line. Otherwise, you can keep it permanent on low or permanent on high. Another thing I found uh, really useful is these fog lights. So when you're driving through the country in Kansas on those country roads, it's real nice to have the uh, fog lights on. It illuminates both the left and the right side of the truck very nicely. Similarly, when you turn the steering wheel to the left, it turns on those uh, fog lights. It turns on the fog light to the left side of the vehicle so you can see it illuminates the path of the direction that you're turning. 
So it was uh, very nice to have those on. And then also, if you're driving in the night and the dashboard lights are too bright, you can just turn them down with the dial right there. This is voice command for the navigation that's built into the truck. And this is to answer a uh, phone. You can also hold that and talk to Siri if you'd like. Or uh, OK Google. All of those commands um, do work and do display on the screen. As long as you are plugged in via USB or USB-C. So yeah, I'm very proud of this truck for making it through everything that it did. Negative 26 degrees uh, Fahrenheit in Minnesota, as well as driving through a blizzard and 10 plus inches of snow. It performed very well for being a stock truck with four wheel drive, being on uh, the crappy tires that it does have. They're more of a performance based tire, I found out. But yeah, it's been a great experience driving this across the country because it's so nice and smooth to drive on the freeway. So easy and so quiet due to the dual pane windows that you can see. Right here, you can see the, how nice and thick those are. It keeps it quiet while you're driving down the freeway. Okay, thanks for watching.